Honourable Member for Courtney Alberney. Speaker, it's an honour to rise today to speak about an incident that took place on November 17th on the west coast of Vancouver Island, where CTV re uh, News reported uh, about uh, an incident that had taken place where thousands of plastic feed bags escaped from an aquaculture farm and washed ashore in the broken groups. Yet the communities weren't notified about this, Madam Speaker. They found out through a leak. The, the company that had uh, had the spill of uh, plastic bags had reported the spill to Coast Guard in October. They had, their float house had gone down. The bags uh, escaped the float house sometime in early November. Yet we didn't learn about this until uh, CTV reported on it. And, and Madam Speaker, I'm going to read about what the memo has in it. it. The memo states, quote, the memo says the discovery could attract significant media and public attention, connecting it to broader marine debris issues such as the Hanjin shipping container spill in November 2016, end quote. Madam Speaker, we know, we know it was a disaster, uh, the efforts of the government to deal with the Hanjin. Uh, their, their plan of action was let the local communities deal with it, and then they'll figure out who pays for it uh, later and then try to reimburse them instead of doing the right thing, which is cleaning up environmental messes and then figuring out who pays for it after, which, 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 which would what people would expect. Madam Speaker, when we learned about this through CTV, the first thing I did is I reached out to the local communities, to Chief Dick at Sashat, to uh, uh, Chief Mack at Toquat Nation, to, Chi uh, to President Les Dorian from Euclid Nation, who's actually here in the House today, Madam Speaker, the Mayor of Euclid and Tofino, and asked them if uh, any of them had been contacted about this spill that had taken place. In fact, Madam Speaker, none of them had been contacted by the government. And I'll tell you why, Madam Speaker, because the government was war more worried about their reputation than protecting the environment, which is shameful, Madam Speaker. The least we would expect as coastal communities is when an incident takes place that they contact the local communities, the people that can help out, you know, Pacific Rim Chapter of Surfrider, Clackwood Cleanup. These groups all are willing to help out when there's a, a, an incident that takes place. They understand the, the significance, all of our region, all of our stakeholders, about protecting our ecosystem, especially our sensitive marine ecosystem, Madam Speaker, where we rely on it for our food, for our economy, for our recreation, and how important it is. Uh, most of all, Madam Speaker, when a memo goes out like this, from the minister's office, from the department. Um, it compromises local staff. The local parks staff at, at Pacific Rim National Park Reserve have worked very hard. They live in our communities. They've worked very hard to create those relationships, that trust. They care about our communities. So when the government makes a decision to hide information from the local communities, they compromise the local staff that are working hard to protect our communities and make us a, a, a better region. Um, Madam Speaker, with tides and, and uh, winds and shifting currents, uh, ocean plastics constantly moving. And uh, Madam Speaker, the government obviously doesn't understand the sense of urgency to take care of these issues. And we hope that you know, the government will support my motion, M151, to have an ocean plastic strategy that will dedicate funds to combating ocean plastic pollution, uh, dedicated funds for cleanups, marine debris cleanups, especially when emergencies like this surface. And uh, I hope the government will make a promise today that they will never, never betray coastal communities and tell them the truth when an incident takes place. It's the right thing to do, Madam Speaker. The our Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Families, Children and Social Development. Very much, Madam President, and I want to thank the member opposite uh, for his focus on this issue, uh, and and pay my respect to, to the, the hard work he does to make sure that the complex coastal communities of the, of the West Coast uh, get the protection they need. Our government also takes it seriously. We're working together with more than 300 Indigenous communities across Canada, Parks Canada, and of course Indigenous uh, peoples and partners in conserving and restoring uh, and presenting Canada's natural and cultural heritage as best of our abilities. Uh, at Pacific Rim National Park Reserve of Canada, the agency is working collaboratively with the Deshat First Nation and other Nunchalna First Nations as partners to achieve long-term conservation and sustainable use of natural and cultural resources. Parks Canada places uh, Parks Canada and places represent the very best that Canada has to offer and to tell the stories of who we are, including the history and cultures and contributions of Indigenous people. The Government of Canada is committed to the protection of Canada's national parks, and of course we take this issue of ocean debris very seriously. When plastic bags were first discovered on the shores of Broken Group Island, 
on, on November 10th, Parks Canada immediately began working to remove the debris. At the time of the initial discovery, storm conditions prevented the agency from fully assessing the scope of the debris. Further work has, though, has continued, though, and has continued since that time with the help of the Canadian Coast Guard, and approximately 4,000 plastic bags have been removed so far, and planning is underway to remove the remaining plastic bags and other larger items. As weather permits, Parks Canada will continue to remove the debris from the Broken Group Islands. The agency is also planning a more formal cleanup effort in the National Park Reserve in collaboration with First Nations and community groups and other federal departments. The Government of Canada appreciates the concerns of all those who have reached out after learning of the debris and extends its thanks in particular to community members and local businesses who have offered so much support in the cleanup efforts. The agency's law enforcement officials are also investigating the incident and will work with the Federal Crown Prosecutor to pursue charges under the Canada National Parks Act, if appropriate. Parks Canada is committed to open and transparent communications with Indigenous partners, stakeholders and all Canadians. The agency also has an obligation to confirm that the information it provides is clear and accurate, ensures an appropriate response and respects investigations that are underway. When word of the incident first spread, Parks Canada was still gathering information to provide an overview of the situation to the Tshat First, First Nations and other Indigenous partners and key stakeholders along the coast. The agency has since had discussions with local First Nations and local government agencies regarding the debris in the Broken Group Islands. In the future, Parks Canada has committed to advising First Nations sooner with respect to environmental incidents that occur within their traditional territory, and Parks Canada will continue to share this information moving forward while respecting that an investigation, of course, is still underway. Thank you.